hey everybody, I'm glad you've joined me for today's uh, devotion. Uh, today we are in chapter 13 of Luke's Gospel, so go ahead and open your Bible there. Hope you've already written in your journal what God said to you. And as always, be praying for an opportunity to talk to somebody about Jesus, praying that today God gives you an opportunity to invite someone to church. And you speak to them, you invite them, and then you show up bright and early for worship and life group Sunday morning, bring somebody with you. Because we exist to love God, love people, make disciples. And when we do that, we're praying for people, we're talking to people, and we are inviting people. All right, Luke 13, um, and, and, and this chapter is in, you know, practically every chapter in the Gospels. There's a lot of really good teaching we could and talk for hours about. But what spoke to me in, in Luke 13 were the first nine verses. In verses 1 through 5, you, you have this brief description of two historical events that happened um, uh, in, in Israel. You, uh, the uh, Galileans in verse 2, um, that um, um, Pilate murdered and mixed their blood with the sacrifices they were bringing. And then you had the people who were killed when this tower, this part of the temple complex fell on them. And, and Jesus asked an interesting question. He said, uh, he said when this, this happened to them, uh, were these Galileans who were executed by Pilate, were they worse sinners, greater sinners than all the other Galileans? And of the Jews who died when that tower fell on them in verse 4, were they worse culprits? Were they worse sinners, worse people than those who weren't killed or were not, you know, the tower did not fall on them? Did those bad things happen to them because they're worse sinners? Now, why would Jesus ask that kind of question? It's because it was very common in Judaism of his day for some to think that if a bad thing happened in a person's life, it had to be because of some sin in their life. You could draw a straight line, a connecting line between the sin and the bad thing that happened. Okay? And there are some people who even think that today. Well, what, do you, what did you do to cause God to do that to you? Or what did you do to cause God to allow that to happen to you? The, you know, direct and and and. and Jesus very clearly says, no, that's, you know, they, the, the Galileans, they weren't worse sinners, those that were died and those who were killed with that. They, they weren't worse than anybody else. In fact, he, he says to, to, to the people listening to him, talk about these stories in verse 3. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you all, you will all, you will all likewise, just like they died you're going to die. And then he's, he repeated that in verse 5. In other words, everybody's in the same boat. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. And bad things don't always happen because of a particular sin. You commit. They, they happen because you are a sinner. I'm a sinner. Everybody's a sinner. We live in a sinful world, a fallen world. Bad stuff happens. And, and all of us, if we don't repent, we will perish. In other words, we're, we're, we're all in the same boat. And so Jesus goes on and uh, in verses 6 and following has this little parable of the fig tree. Verse 6, he began telling, telling this parable. A man had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard and, and he came looking for fruit on it but did not find any. In verse 70, and he said to the, to the vineyard keeper, the gardener, if you will, but behold, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even take up, use up that spot in the ground? Let's get rid of it and plant something else there. But he, the, the vine keeper, the vineyard keeper, the gardener, answered in verse 8 and said to him, let it alone, sir. For this year too, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine, great. But if not, we'll cut it down then. And uh, I was reading those two, two, these verses all together, and I got to thinking, right, we're all sinners, and bad things don't happen to you because of the particular. Now, we do know that sin can bring bad things to your life. We know that, okay? Yes. 
But just because something bad happens doesn't mean it's because of a sin in your life. We all are sinners who need to repent. But now Jesus has expectations that when someone repents, okay, you get saved, you're, you're, you're like a fig tree planted in God's vineyard and he expects you to produce fruit. Jesus expects you as a believer, as a disciple, to, to produce fruit. And if you don't, eventually you'll be cut down because you're not a real fig tree. You're not a fruit-bearing fig tree. You're really not saved. But there's a message here for people like me and other ministry leaders in the church and the church itself that we are to be patient and spend a lot of time fertilizing fig trees, giving them every possible opportunity to begin producing fruit. We don't just chop them down the first year because they didn't produce fruit. We are to be patient and we are to water them and fertilize them and do everything. We, we don't give up so easily on people. And I, I think that churches should focus more on fertilizing fig trees than cutting them down because they're unfruitful. And, and there are some churches, they're real big on having a pure church. Now I get it, I understand it. But if we're not careful, we're not patient enough and we don't cultivate the fig trees long enough. In fact, if you have a pure church, I'm not convinced it's a great church because a great church is going to have all kinds of people in it. And some of them are going, going to be fruit trees that are not bearing fruit. The old saying, a hospital for sick sinners, yeah, yeah. The only pure church I want to be a part of is the one in heaven. That's the message for today. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow as we wrap up this week in Luke 14. God bless you, everybody.